It's Friday, April 9th, 2021. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, The Power of a Movement, and the scripture is Acts chapter 4. As soon as they were freed, Peter and John returned to the other believers and told them what the leading priests and elders had said. When they heard the report, all the believers lifted their voices together in prayer to God. O Sovereign Lord, Creator of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, you spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant, saying, Why were the nations so angry? Why do they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepared for battle. The rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. In fact, this has happened here in this very city. For Herod Antipas, Pontius Pilate, the governor, the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were all united against Jesus, your holy servant, whom you anointed. But everything they did was determined beforehand according to your will. And now, O Lord, hear their threats, and give us, your servants, great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After this prayer, the meeting place shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. Indulge me for a few moments to argue with myself. Movements, which have largely succeeded throughout human history, all have one thing in common. The strength of the group is collectively greater than that of the resistance against the movement. Well, duh, of course, preacher. They wouldn't have been successful if they weren't stronger now, would they? Certainly not. But the corresponding truth about what makes movements so strong is that even a perfect idea, a moral, ethic, or timing for change is powerless without the group. A movement without a group is dead in the water. Peter and John, even though they were the leaders of God's sweeping movement of salvation, understood that God was empowering his church, not just a few brave apostles. Earlier, Peter and John had healed a crippled man and were arrested and brought before the powers that be. God's Spirit helped them to proclaim truth, Acts chapter 4, verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of our people, are we being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, the man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. For Jesus is the one referred to in the scriptures where it says, The stone that you builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. This truth unnerved the council, and they set Peter and John free. So what did they do with their newfound success? Did they run for Congress or the next elections of the council? What they did was head right back to the group, the church, and placed this event in the hands of those who would offer up prayer to God for more boldness to accomplish his will. And when they all prayed, honoring God and freely placing themselves at God's disposal, the Spirit of God gave power that shook the building and eventually shook the world. Peter and John understood that God's promises would be fulfilled through God's church. They understood that joining hands with God's heart is a cooperative effort, and apart from each other, we are departing from God's will. But joined together in lifting up God's sovereign holy will, the church is a tidal wave of movement, unstoppable for goodness and righteousness. For you today, if you're like me, you're tempted to do things yourself rather than depend on anyone else, let alone a group. But that is allowing the enemy to make us little droplets of evaporating puddles. 
Rather, God calls the church to be a tsunami of righteousness for the sake of this world and his kingdom. So, church, put aside the drought of petty differences and preferences. Puddle up, river run, ocean gather, and wash this world for the sake of the cross. Hit you on that as you hit the rocky road.